I can't remember what led to this, but he had just finished having sex with me and he was breaking news to me that the penis is put into another hole, which is not the pee hole. Close your mouth. I did the same thing when you told me. Why didn't anyone tell me until now? My father was always busy chasing civilians and we all assume they are red notes too. The only time he had was for drinking the green bottles of club beer he does not pay for in my mother's bar. We would all line up in our uniforms to take our money for school. It was during those moments that I would see him a little sober because it was early in the morning. And he noticed me too. Well, the length of my uniform and my weight gain and my foreseeable future of getting raped. Instinctively, I knew my father was in the parent I would entrust my vagina to. I turned to my mother. All women have a vagina, I thought. Mother has one. I knew this because she peed like me, squatting or sitting or standing with legs wide apart. Sometimes my leg would be wide apart even when I wasn't urinating. I would be on the floor, visitors present, in the living room or not. I just wasn't able to keep my legs closed. I would play open and close as safe to catch someone's attention. I always got my mother's and her slaps and beatings and constant screaming for me to close my babavi. I swear my mother looked at me the same way I looked at my science teacher. Anytime she would catch me with my legs wide apart, her eyes would flame up like a burning corn field passing red hot baton from leaf to leaf. That fire would raise my scalp for days because of the way she dragged me by my short black hair back into my room. She would stand in the doorway and watch me cry and wriggle like a worm in salt. My vagina set on fire by the ginger forced up there to make some decency flood down my brain and cool me down. Even when my eyes would send her begging messages of pity, she would force the ginger into my urethra and all I'd get as reply were mammograms of lumps that were simply benign compared to if time and location would have given her the room to cultivate her malignant thoughts of cutting my clitoris for good so she'd save her ginger for her hot pepper soup. I looked at my science teacher the same way my mother looked at me in those horrid vagina gingering times. I mostly looked at his bulge. He had a big one too, thanks to skimpy black and grey satin trousers. He was packing a lot, that man, packing a lot of shit down his crouch and up his brain. I, in all sincerity, wanted to, and if I could, would have castrated him. I never have forgiven him for talking about vaginas with such disgusting passion and inciting all the dry nuts boys to laugh in class. Science class always seemed male dominated because only the boys were laughing all the time, leaving the girls who almost twice outnumbered the boys awkward and self-conscious. I never could tell when the reproductive system would turn into sex ed for boys, featuring sour pans for penetrative sex and long stresses of male some male genitalia, especially scrotum. Scrotum always vibrated the walls of the four-room block and rumbled that to my embarrassment, the stomach-churning laughter of other pupils in the three other classes on the block. He was shamefully loud, but everyone found him funny because he was a pervert. Only I acknowledged that he was a pervert.